All stand to receive the family, please. Today we welcome you to the homegoing celebration, celebration of a fighter, celebration of a person that had no end, none other than Shelley Yvonne Godbold. Today, one moment please, stand by. I'm Wesley McDuffie, the uh, chaplain of the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office, serving as your officiant today. Now we'll ask the chaplain of the Arlington Police Department, Rick Bergen, to please come and give us our invocation. On an extremely difficult day such as today, one place we can look to draw strength and find comfort is God's word. In the Old Testament, God tells us that he is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the foam and the mountains quake. With their surging, the Lord Almighty is with us. And it goes on to say, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. He reached down on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep, deep waters. The Lord was my support. And that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And he comforts all who mourn. And then in the New Testament, tells us that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Father of compassion 
And the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, he has said, never will I leave you nor forsake you, so we can say with confidence that the Lord is my helper. And then it says that I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Would you bow with me as I pray, please? Father, so many are broken, weary, and hurting this morning, and we need you desperately. You told us that you would never leave us or forsake us, and we are holding on to that promise. Father, you told us that you are near to the brokenhearted, and you give us strength. You give strength to the weary, and we are desperately holding on to that promise today. Father, we grieve because we lost a mom, a family member, Father, a co-worker, a friend. We grieve because Shelley is no longer here. Father, you know that we grieve because we have loved. And so even today, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the questions, in the midst of the confusion, Father, you are still the maker of the heavens. You are still the bright and morning star. You are still the breath of all creation. Father, you are the one who always was, the one who is, and who is to come. And so thank you for understanding us and our grief. Every one of us needs you. Please make yourself known in ways that you have never done before. And although we may not comprehend your plan, Father, we don't have any answers to many questions. Father, help us find the comfort. Help us find the peace. And help us celebrate Shelley knowing that she is with you. It is in your holy name that I pray. Amen. I'd like to thank Rick for that invocation. At this point, I'd just like to make a couple of acknowledgments. In times like this, no man stands alone. One thing about this blue line, we call it a family. The blue line stretch from one part of the country to the other. If you look around the world, it's just a ribbon or wrapped around a globe. That's what law enforcement did. That's why you have multiple agencies that are intertwined today doing what we do today. Thanks to Euless and Arlington for serving as honor guards today. What, what a very, very valuable service that they are, they are giving to us this day. That's because we're all family. And today we just want to just salute those. And then also um, we want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this day. And Mr. Wade from Wade Family Funeral Home. Everyone plays a very intricate part in making sure that this is a glorious occasion. Now, with that being said, I've read a little of Shelley's bio, and I didn't find nowhere in there where she was sad. I, I, didn't, I didn't see it in, in the bio. I saw nothing but a fighter. I saw nothing but a very tenacious individual. But, but y'all got to do a little bit better today. We, we, need to, we need to have a little smiles on our face because she fought a good fight. And she left some encouragement in each and every one of you. And, hey, in order for her spirit to live on, hey, you got to show it going forward. So come on now. We're going to give God the praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have a little soft music, then we're going to come back. Amen. <laughs> All right.
Amen. Now it's time to hear from Charles Hawley, son of Shelley. Come on up. Be in prayer. I know this is a very difficult time for him, so please be in prayer for him. And Becky, I'm making one little change. Stand at the ready. You're going to be next. I'd like to start off by saying thank you for everyone for showing up today. Shelley was a one of kind person. No words that I can say today can or will do her justice. I would like to tell you how I met the woman that I would later call my mom for the rest of my life. I first met her when I was 12 years old and became her family. During the last 31 years, I got to know a wonderful human being, a mother like no other, and I'm proud to be her son. She made sure that no matter what Kayla and I wanted or needed, we had it, even if that meant she had to work. Extra shifts during Christmas and our, on our birthdays. <sighs> Things I remember most about her is that when she was caring, she was a caring, loving, compassionate person that would help anyone and everyone. She has instilled in so many things in my life that when I look back and I think of, if it were not for her, what type of man would I have turned out into? No matter what we kids did, she was always there for us. 
I remember the first time I got my ear pierced. She told me, we are going to do this right. And got me a diamond stud for my earring. <laughs> then she told me, no son of mine is going to walk around with some cheap, fake, shitty earring. <laughs> and when I was 18, and I was traveling in stockyards here in Fort Worth, she was leaving, and she seen an accident with a vehicle that looked exactly like my S10. She waited up all night to make sure me and my friends got home safely. Then the very next day, she took my S10 <laughs> and traded it in for a Silverado because it was safer. It was bigger. Uh, she also made it where we had an open door policy and any, that any of my friends could come over whenever they need it. No matter what time of the night, no matter what they need it. And I hold that policy true to my house with my kids. She was always looking out for everyone that was in her life. She brought hope and light to so many people's lives. I also remember the look on her face as I graduated from basic training. And the proudness that shone from her made me want to continue to be a better man. Of course, we celebrated in our style and went to get tattoos at the local Fort Benning, Georgia <laughs> tattoo parlor. Mom suffered from MS and I watched from her journey to Russia for a stem cell procedure from a duty station far away. I did this via phone and Facebook. I watched her as she went from a wheelchair to walking in a matter of weeks due to this procedure. She came back to the States with a renewed purpose of getting back into the police force. I would visit as much as I could being in the military and my kids always remembered her and will always remember her as Grandma Sprinkles. <laughs> a fun loving clown. She joined various organizations. You could not help being around her and not be happy. She changed so many lives and truly inspired a lot of people to keep going and never give up. Mom was a true inspiration to me and everyone else that she ever talked to and told her story to. She may be gone, but her story and life will forever touch us in ways that we may not know. We will always love and miss you until we meet again. Fly high, dreamer. Thank you. I am Becky Sparks, uh, founder creator of the parade group that Shelly was a part of, also part of North Texas Jeep Club. I don't know exactly where Shelly came from, <laughs> but one day she showed up and she's stuck in my rearview mirror. <laughs> and everywhere I went, I mean, she was always there. I met her through Diane, of course. Um, they became close friends. Um, Shelly was a big part of the parade group. She loved children more than anything. She loved spreading good vibes, as we say. She was always the happy one, bouncing around the parking lot, smiling, cheering everybody on, you know, getting us in good spirits, even if it was, you know, a support parade, even if it was not such a good story, but, you know, we were there to support those hard times with people as well. I'm thankful that I met her. She's like been the biggest gift ever in my life. And she will always keep a smile on my face. And I'm gonna let Diane talk. <laughs> um, I met Shelly uh, out in Bridgeport. Um, there was a group of us that went and Shelly just appeared out of nowhere <laughs> and her um, Aunt Linda. And, and she had met up with James and Kathy and James and, and I, 
actually worked at the same place on the next floor. So um, we all kind of bonded together and Shelly got stuck in the mud and she's like, my baby Jeep, my baby Jeep, because she was stuck. <laughs> and um, so we, we pulled her out and James got stuck too. We pulled him out, but James is our leader for trails, our trail leader. Um, we all went to um, many trips. Um, Shelly loved to go on everything Jeep. And um, we went to Big Bend National Park. We went to Gilmer. She would camp out. She had a, a tent with a air mattress that was fit for a king. <laughs> and, um, but she was always ready to go. You know, if anybody had an idea, let's do it. You know, let's do it. Who cares? Let's just do it. You know, she, um, she always kind of was the motor that got everybody going. And um, I, one thing I do want you all to know, in, in the months that Shelly was in the hospital, um, every one of you that sent a message on Facebook or a prayer, every day I was up there, we had a couple, we had a ritual after everybody left, and um, I would say the rosary over her, and um, then we would play Jeep Girl, and then we would play Sheesh, and Shelly would raise her eyebrows, and she would be smiling, so I know she heard, but I read every single one of your messages to her, and it brought smiles on her face, and her eyes would light up, but she knew how much every single one of you loved her, whether you in the, were in the meat fight group, her MS sister, and Shelly had lots of best friends. So we're her, those in pink are her Jeep besties. She had cruise besties. I don't know if the cruise besties are here or not. She had MS besties. She had high school besties. So Shelly had a lot of besties. Um, so I'm sure many of you in here are a bestie some way or another. But um, when Shelly passed, um, I know in my heart she was wel welcomed by God with open arms because she smiled as she took her last breath. And to me, that was God opening his arms and saying, come to me, Shelly, I've been waiting for you. You've done so much good and brought so much joy. Your mission on life was to bring happiness and hope to people and let people see that happiness spreads. And so y'all remember Shelly as she was because she loved everybody. Um, you know, everybody was like, oh yeah, I know Shelly. I'm really good friends with Shelly. And I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? But, um, and one last thing was, um, I normally don't wear a lot of makeup or fake eyelashes, but Shelly had told Becky in the hospital, we spent East, we spent Christmas together. So she did get to, to she did get to have Christmas, and she was coherent. And we gave her presents, and she, she had bought. Oh, let me back up before I tell the the, the one thing. <laughs> she had like twenty five pounds of what kind of chocolate was that? Peppermint bark. Peppermint bark <laughs> from Williams Sonoma, and then she had some other thing, and then she had she was ordering takeout of gummy bears and <laughs> um, I don't know what all, but she had all this chocolate and candy and she had new shoes. She saw, she'd see a nurse that had some shoes that she liked and she was on there ordering <laughs> shoes, you know, and Kayla's like, all this stuff is coming to the house, <laughs> you know, when she order again, the ring's going off. But Shelly had said, um, I don't care what you say, Becky, when I get out of here, I'm wearing fake eyelashes, and I don't care what anybody says. So <laughs> the fake eyelashes are for Shelly today, and hopefully they aren't going to just rip right off my face with the tears. But uh, in case I don't have them on later, you know what happened. But please remember Shelly. She loved every – she really did love everyone she met. Um, no, she didn't like you. She cut you off, and that was it, and you knew it. But everybody else, she loved you. If you, you were here, she body. loved you. Um, there were maybe a couple, but <laughs> – Anyway, um, thank you all so much for being here, and um, the North Texas Jeep Club, birthday parades, um, the meat fight group, the MS group, was there another one she was in? Um, I don't 
I don't know the two two <laughs> the two two group. Was there a two two group? They always wore two twos. Yeah, she's probably wondering why we don't have two twos on today, because two twos were like the thing. So. Um, Anyway, thank you all again for coming. We really appreciate it on behalf of North Texas Jeep Club and DFW Birthday Parades and her besties of whatever group you're in. I just also want to say this is not my funeral attire. Um, yeah. But Shelly would really want us to be having a celebration of life for her. That's what she was. She was full of spirits, full of life, just good and all and loved everyone. And I just want to remember her that way and keep spreading those good vibes that she did. Thank you. See there, I got confirmation. Y'all supposed to be laughing. <laughs> uh, there you go. Well, after this next song uh, from the Pantigo Police Department, we bring none other than Captain Sam Nance up after this next song. Made a wrong turn once or twice Dug my way out, blood and fire Bad decisions, that's alright Welcome to my silly life Mistreated, this place I can do this. I'm Captain Sam Nance with Paintigo. Um, 
these last two songs, man, that's Shelly. That's Shelly, the, the rainbow. That's the way she looked at life all the time. Uh, the perfect song. That was her message to people that had MS and other medical issues. She always let them know that they were perfect to her and the rest of the world. Just beautiful. Um, first of all, I want to thank the U.S. Police Department for sending us Shelly. She's a great officer. You trained her well, and we do appreciate you guys for sending us one of the best cops I've ever worked with. Uh, Shelly's a true meaning of a dedicated police servant. She had integrity. She loved doing the business, and she loved it. I mean, you can see in her eyes when she came to work, uh, except when I made her mad. <laughs> you know, in our, our police department, we admin is myself, Chief Coulter, Sergeant Adams, and Shelly's office. We're all together, so we just kind of yell up down the hall. You know, and when she was mad, you could tell. It was... <laughs> Um, this is very hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Shelly had a great mission in her police business. She understood what a policeman is supposed to be. She treated people positive, respectful, and she understood that the job had to be done. When she did traffic, she understood that enforcing traffic saved lives. She knew that you got to keep these speeders from speeding to bring down the deaths on the road. She told me that. She goes, we have to keep people from killing each other in these cars. Every life saved is a family started down the road. A child grows up. She believed that very much. As a detective, man, she was, she was right on. She understood that when you take somebody's freedom away, you need to do it right. You need to present a case to the DA's office and get that bad person off the street or get them to learn to correct their, their bad behavior. She understood that and she was real strong with that and she made her a great detective. And Shelly's interaction with the residents of Pantigo, the business elite people, the staff, she lived in Pantigo. She worked in Pantigo. She shopped in Pantigo. And we ate at Pantigo Cafe at least three days a week. Okay. Uh, basically, we spent our last three, four years with Shelly, admin, me and chief and sergeant. Um, went to lunch together every day, almost. And it's hard to see that empty seat across the table. She was part of our team, our shift. You had patrol shift, you, had, you know, but she was part of us. She probably spent more time with us than she did anybody else because that's her job, you know, 40 hours a week. So it's a void. It's, it's been really hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, me and Shelly started together about two months before she did. Been painting about five years. And, uh, she really enjoyed serving the public. She always went out of her way to help everybody. And when the citizen hurt, she hurt. If we lost a resident and she knew that resident, she would go by and say something to the family. That was the kind of girl that Shelly was. Um, let me see one thing about detective. Between 2019 and 2020, we had three major armed robberies where people went into businesses at gunpoint robbed them, and then left. Well, two of the incidents, there was four suspects each. One, there was one suspect. To try to find people that are masked and you don't know who they are, she was such a good detective that she used all of her tricks in the book. So on two of those cases that had four suspects each, she used uh, Arlington Detectives' help. She used the FBI. ATF, she contacted the Arlington crime scene to help out with some stuff, uh, their technical labs and stuff, and they all got arrested. And they got that way because she went the extra step as a detective. She did not let it lie. She found those people and they all got arrested. And in one case, 
it, she, as a crime scene tech, I think at Eula she did crime scene uh, stuff, she found the only fingerprint to find the guy. And he got arrested while she was in the hospital. So she really was a good uh, detective. All right, to, to Shelly's MS family, her meat fight family, her Jeep family, I think I can speak for Shelly that she loves you. I mean, y'all completed her every day, all y'all. Because believe me, every Monday we had to sit there and hear about the briefs from the weekend. <laughs> okay? And some of y'all did some stuff you shouldn't have done, but anyway. Uh, but we had to hear the briefs and we got to see the pictures and uh, I can't tell you we have to go to work Shelly oh no you gotta look at this picture you know and so and then after Monday we had to hear about hey I need off this weekend I need off Friday I gotta go A, B, C, D and we were always happy to do it because she always affected everybody in her life I don't know how many thousands of dollars she collected in charity money. I know it had to be a lot. Uh, I used to think that it started after she had her uh, Russian stem cell thing. But after I saw y'all's pictures after she passed, it started way before that. The Euless pictures I got were just, she was always been that way. Okay. So like I said, I speak for her. Y'all completed her. All y'all did. Okay, you made her happy. Okay, you, you did absolute wonders. And I don't know if I ever saw a smile on her face. And she always said good morning with, with a smile. And if I said, if I made her mad, whoever taught her this phrase, I'm going to get you. It's, that's fine. <laughs> Who taught, did y'all teeter? Oh. Yeah, that was a new phrase. That's fine. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna get you for that. And also, Shelly would probably tell y'all thank you for allowing her in your family. Okay. Now, as you know, as police, we don't make a lot of money. So we work a lot of off duty. Shelly. Uh, I've never seen anybody love to work off duty like she did. She treated it like a, a vacation, it seems like sometimes. Camp Thurman, she's better there in that heat, directing traffic. And you can see her, she wants to say hi to every child, say hi to every parent, say hi to every resident walking down the street. It, it, it's, it looked like a little kid at Christmas morning. Her eyes always had that spark of Santa Claus. You know, everybody know what I'm talking about? That was her. She always had that spark. Um, I used to tell her, well, Shelly, you need to slow down a little bit. I mean, you got, you, you work, you know, check the check and, you, you know, you spend your money on tutus and all the other stuff she buys and <laughs> stuff for the Jeep. I go, she, she goes, no, I have to make people happy. They came first in her life. She made it through paying her bills, but they were always first. She loved making people happy, and that's what made her inner soul one of the best I've ever met. Um, anyway, I did find a, a thank you card in her uh, office. It took me about 10 days to pack her office up. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. A little bit of time, tears, tears, tears. Uh, but I found a card. I cannot read it, so I'm going to have Chaplain Duffy read it for me because I just can't get through it. I'm surprised I made it through this. But uh, to the Pantigo officers, she loves you. Sometimes she got a little feisty and talked a little too straight. Everybody knows about that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, she loved all y'all. The firefighters, she loved you. City employees, everybody, she loved all y'all. And those two songs were... Shelly, thank you.
card made around a few hands. And he ended up in mine. Help me, Lord. Is Kaylin Murray here today? Kaylin Murray? Okay, this card is from Kaylin Murray. It says, thank you very much. I'm getting a little old, so I'm going to give him help on there. It says, even though you didn't have to do it, you did it anyway. And it was much appreciated. Dear Detective Godball, I really want to say thank you. However, I feel like you really, it really isn't enough. It's not enough for me just to say thank you. So she says, you are my guardian angel that came down to help me when my mom and dad could not. And for that, I am truly thankful. I still have the dog that you got for me when I was in the hospital. In the first two months of my recovery, he was by my side, and I couldn't sleep if I didn't have him with me. I wanted to see you today so that you could see me one year after the accident and know that I'm doing amazing. I graduated from school, got a new car, started working at a new job in the field that I went to school for, and my doctor said, my bones heal to perfection. Thank you so much, Kaylin. You never know what you do when you're just doing your job. You never know what you're doing when you take that extra mile that you didn't have to travel. You never know how you impact someone's life. But for a person like Shelly, she left an indelible impression on this young lady's heart, like so many of you have and so many will in, in, in the days going forward. So thank you, Shelly. Thank you from Kaylin. Now, we'll have Chief Brown come up from Euless and share with us after Chief Brown, we'll be back to bring our big man up. Shelley came to work for the Euless Police Department February of 2002. We brought her in as a dispatcher in our communications section. One year later, she was nominated for the Civilian Employee of the Year. She served in communications for two years, and in 2004, she tested and became a police officer. 2005, she was selected as our Rookie Officer of the Year. So you can see that the instant she, became in, she came into our organization, she began to show the traits that distinguished her from those around her. Shelley was selected as a crime scene officer and became proficient at documenting and processing crime scenes of all types. She became a senior police officer in 2007 and was selected to serve as our neighborhood police officers in 2008. She had been an outstanding dispatcher a motivated patrol officer, but she found her true calling when she became a neighborhood police officer. Our neighborhood police officers are tasked with educating the public about the police role of the community, expanding the police presence within the community by reaching out to individuals, citizens, neighborhoods, organizations, churches, schools, anywhere citizens could be found, our neighborhood police officers were asked to go and make friends. To say the least, Shelley was a rock star when it came to making friends uh, and the way that she could reach out to our community. I do not believe that Shelley ever met a stranger because once you met her, you were her friend. And of that, there was no doubt. There was nowhere she would not go. There was no one or group she would not try to get in front of. She was equally as at ease with kindergartners as she was speaking to congregations of any church of any faith. She was a natural when it came to police community relations. She was all, always on the lookout for new friends and new partnerships between the police and the community. 
She watched the fire department do their fire clown program and immediately saw an opportunity to expand the police presence in the schools through the fire clown program. So she became a part of the fire department's clown troop when she transformed herself into Sprinkles the Cop. <laughs> now Sprinkles the Clown was an instant hit in our community. So you can see Shelley set the bar pretty high for the performance in our neighborhood police officer. She had the world by the tail. And she had found her place in our organization, the place where she felt like she was making a true and lasting difference in the lives of the, everyone that she met. And she was starting to see true return on her investment in the community when her body started to fail her. She left us in 2012 because she simply could not do the job anymore. It was not a lack of desire to continue to serve. It was her body refusing to obey her spirit and her will. When she left us, I placed her badge in my top desk drawer. And I told her, get well, come back, and I'll give it back to you. But against all odds, she got well. But circumstances got in the way of her returning, and we were not able to get her back in the organization. To me, Shelly is one of those rare people. Some people lead in their lives through their intellect, some through their emotions, some through their ego. Shelly led with her heart. And the people who lead with their heart are the people who attract others. Because they're genuine, they have nothing to hide and no agenda to fulfill. You know them when you meet them because you feel safe in their presence. I was going through Shelley's personnel file to get the dates right while I was preparing this, and I came across a statement. It was a handwritten statement that she made right before she had her first interview with us. And we asked her, just tell us what your most favorite part of life is. And she told us in her in our writing sample, she mentioned that her family and her service to the community as a thing that she was most proud of. But what struck me was the last sentence, and I quote, I really appreciate the opportunity to apply for this position. And if I get it, I promise to do my very best each and every shift. Well, I can honestly say that Shelley was true to those words. She gave her best each and every shift. But on a much larger scale, I can hear her making that same deal with God. God, give me this life, and I promise to do my very best each and every day. I also believe that she lived up to those words. And that when God greeted her, he said to her, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Will the citizens of uh, Pantigo please stand? Any citizens of Pantigo, will you please stand? Please, will you remain standing as I invite to the stage, Chief Coulter, family, if you would please look at your citizens that are coming out to support you today. Uh, it's a great honor to have people to turn aside from their busy schedule to come and support you on a day like today. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief John Coulter. Well, as uh, Captain Nance said, this is going to be tough. But we'll see if we can make it through it. Before I begin, I'd like to uh, extend a public thank you for all the agencies that has made this possible. We couldn't have done this without ULIS. We couldn't have done it without Arlington. The Honor Guards, we greatly appreciate that. We couldn't have done it without Tarrant County Constables. We couldn't have done it without UTA. We couldn't have done it without Dow Worthington Gardens Police Department. 
and Tarrant County Sheriff's Department. We greatly appreciate everything. With your support and guidance and resources, you've allowed us to honor Shelley and her family with the greatest degree possible. But there's, there's no words that I can actually say that uh, really show my appreciation on that. Let's talk a little bit about Shelley and celebrate her life as we are here to do. And a lot of speakers have already said Shelley loved being a police officer. She loved helping people. She loved working and living in the community. She had a great bond with the business owners, with the residents of Pantego. And likewise, there's not enough words or time of day to describe the impact Shelley had on those around her. A few things we can say was certainly She loved being a cop. You know, she loved to have fun and, and uh, importantly, she loved her family, especially Kayla. You know, when uh, Shelly was pretty stubborn, we all know that. <laughs> when she had her back surgery, she was laid up and uh, we had her on light duty. And you know, she loved to work cowboy games. She loved to work the ranger games. And it got to be so bad that we had to call the person who did the scheduling for the cowboys and said, hey, if Shelly calls you to sign up to work a game, you tell her no, the chief said she cannot do it. <laughs> and she tried several times to do that. <laughs> you know, I remember when Shelly bought her Jeep, she joined the Jeep club, and of course a lot of, a lot of the Jeep club members and a lot of her friends are here to celebrate her life. You know, the Jeep, when she first bought it, wasn't anything fancy. Um, one weekend, I come back after she'd bought it, and I see these big tires on there, big <laughs> tires and wheels. I looked at her, I said, what are you doing? She had this big old grin on her face, and she was just happy. No, oh, she was having a blast. And then the next weekend, I come back on a Monday, and her Jeep is all pink. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what is going on here? Well, she loved to, of course, you know how she loved her Jeep, Dreamer. You know, so she fixed it up. She loved to go camping. She loved to do all the, all the drive-by birthday parties that she had. Uh, you know, she loved kids of all ages. Uh, she had a blast going places, you know, like I said, the camping trips and everything else. She loved directing traffic at Camp Thurman. I mean, it's like, Sam said earlier, you know, you'd see her out there and, and of course sweat just pouring off of her, but she had a smile on her face and she loved to talk with the parents. She loved to talk with the kids. You know, she'd go in there and dance with the kids, you know, when she had the opportunity. Of course, back in, in uh, 2016 of October, we hired her to work after working for Euless PD from 2004 to 2012, of course, uh, the first two years, as Chief Brown said, she was uh, working in dispatch. You know, she uh, showed her dedication and her willingness to develop relationships with the, uh, all the citizens in town. And in 2018, she was promoted to Detective Corporal. Uh, even while working in CID, she would find the time to get out and was mostly on Fridays. She'd love to get out and go run traffic. You know, she would love to get out and go visit with the business owners. She'd uh, 
always get out and and when she would after she'd come back from work in traffic she would come back into the office she said you know I'm working more traffic than these guys and I'm only working one day a week <laughs> and she loved to make fun of the guys and give them a hard time you know when she when she went out she always had that opportunity to stop somebody and she'd love to get their autograph <laughs> if you if you get my drift on that <laughs> you know i don't know what what it was about shelly when i first met her she uh i'd only been there maybe about three weeks or so and i was getting to know everybody and I had previously worked for the town for about 27 years prior to that and was chief seven years before that at, when I retired back in October of 07. So when I came back off October in uh, 2018, like I said, I'd been there maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks or so, and we were, you know, I was trying to get to know everybody and, and I made a comment to Shelly. And the next thing I know is she looks at me, she goes, Sure, jackass. And, <laughs> and, and I look at her, and she had a big grin on her face. Well, later she told me, you know, that there was no disrespect there. That she told me that she calls everybody jackass if she likes them. <laughs> well, from then on, I heard jackass coming out of her mouth a lot of times. <laughs> you know, which, which was good. It, it, it made me feel good. And it, it, there wasn't any... Uh, ill feeling there, you know, between Shelly and myself. Uh, you know, I'm not going to mention the, the parts because they've already been mentioned about her having MS and going to Russia and uh, because we, we all know about that. And, you know, even though we like to have fun, law enforcement officers, we get sucked into the job making it a priority and neglecting our families and a lot of times ourselves and i myself i'm guilty of this my wife reminds me of that constantly <laughs> but upon the appointment of chief i was committed to cultivating a family atmosphere within the police department and this meant a lot to me and it meant that we take care of each other and we work well and we work well with families. To my, to my Fantica family. We will get through this. We will be with Kayla and her family because we Because we are family. We're going to make it through the good times and the bad times. And I will be there for you anywhere, anytime. Thank you. Amen. Please be in prayer for our next speaker after this song, uh, Chaplain Tim Barker of the Texas Health System of Fort Worth. As he come and give us words of encouragement after this song. So please be, be very prayerful.
I can see it in your eyes that you are restless. The time has come for you to leave. It's so hard to let you go, but in this life I know you have to be who you were made to be. As you step out on the road, I'll say a prayer. So that in my heart, you always will be there. This is not goodbye. I know we'll meet again. So let your life begin. Cause this is not goodbye. It's just I love you to take with you until you're Stirring in your soul has left you wondering Should you stay or turn around? Well, just remember that your dreams, they are a promise That you were made to change the world So don't let fear stop you now, cause Take with you until you're home again. Oh, I know the brightest star above was created by the one who loved more than we'll ever know to guide you when you're lost. What started as a still small voice is raging now, and your only choice is to find. Sorry, I suffer from shortness. <laughs> I titled this The Impact of a Life. And I know that uh, a lot of us is talking about how Shelly has uh, impacted our lives. So I think it's appropriate. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. It's Proverbs 27, 17. Hello. Thank you for coming today. My name is Tillman Barker. I'm a chaplain with Texas Health Resources. But to Shelly, Kayla, and Charles, I am Tim or Timmy Barker. I'll do my best to keep it together, but I make no promises. 
looking around this room, I see numerous people from various avenues of life, family, friends, and all peoples from differing professions, organizations, and stages in life. Everyone gathered here today is here due to the impact that Shelley had on them. We all have different stories of how we met Shelley, worked with her, or shared life with her in some form or fashion. When I met Shelley, I was just some punk kid without any direction, hope of graduating high school, or a stable family life to speak of. Charles and I shared a class together at Trinity High School and hit it off quick as friends. From there, I was introduced to Shelly and Kayla. Soon enough, I was spending most of my Fridays, Saturdays, and any other days that end in Y at Shelly's house hanging out. From home-cooked meals to Chinese takeout during winter storms, Shelly's home was always a safe and warm place to be. She never turned anyone away, and she truly loved people. Shelly showed me what it meant to be a parent, how a mom cares and loves for her kids. Shelly provided wisdom, encouragement, and discipline when any of us got out of line, which at the time we did frequently. Well, at least Charles and I did. Kayla was smart and stayed out of trouble. <laughs> Shelly always got us back on track, though. And I deeply respected her for enforcing the boundaries that a punk kid like myself needed. And I am truly blessed to have been able to meet Shelly and spend time in her presence. Kayla and Charles. The words of encouragement that I give to you today in remembrance of Shelley is this. Remember who your mom leaves a legacy of being. An awesome mom and a passionate fighter. A woman who strived toward greatness regarding everything within her community, her family, and her life. Your mom never gave up, and once she set her mind on something... That's just the way it was, so watch out. Your mom has changed the lives of numerous individuals, probably more than any of us will ever know. Your mom opened her heart and her home to those in need. Shevly loved God, loved having fun, and fought for the betterment of those around her as much as she fought for the betterment of herself. Shelly was a fighter of fighters, and no one ever stole or decreased that fiery spirit for life that she burned with. Kayla and Charles, that same spirit for life burns within the both of you and is a testament who Shelly is. So fight on, fighters, for you know not the impact your life will have on those you encounter on your journey. The impact of a life. Thank you, Shelley, for showing us what that means and how to live it out. Words of Timothy, of Paul to Timothy, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now laid up for me is, is nothing but a path of righteousness only for me and can be also for those that love his appearing. Paul to Timothy wrote those words. So as Shelley was a fighter, you can be as well. Right now, we're going to call up uh, the mayor of uh, Pantigo. If he would come at this time, Mr. Russell Brewer. For the presentation of the city fly. Thank you, Mayor Brewster. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done for us and all you're doing right now. 
Lord, we thank you for Gospel City Church who thought it not robbery to open the doors to allow us to use this facility for this occasion. Now, Lord, I pray for Charles and Kayla that you will continue to hold them, that you will continue to guide them and, and care for them as they go through this, these times like only you can. And, Lord, we'll give you all the glory and the praise because it's yours. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. At this point, I'm going to ask the family to remain seated and ask the rest of the congregation to please rise as the honor guards will now be in charge of the honor services.
Pentigo to all units. Stand by for last call for Corporal Shelley Godbold, badge number 610. Pantigo to 610. Pantigo to 610. Pantigo to Corporal Godbold, badge number 610. Pantigo to all units. The Pantigo Police Department sadly announces the passing of Corporal Godbold, badge number 610 who served the Department and Citizens of Pantigo from October 2016 through February 2022. It is with great sadness that we mark February 10th, 2022 as Officer Godbold's end of watch. Officer Shelley Godbold, number 610, faithfully served the citizens of Euless and Pantigo for the past 13 years. Shelley was dedicated to her daughter, Kayla, and her family. We will miss you, Shelley. We will miss your contagious smile and loving spirit. We are all better people because of the time we were able to spend with you here on this earth. Rest easy, Shelley. We have it from here. We will see you again soon, one day. May you rest in peace. God bless you, Kayla and family. Painting at all units, Officer Shelley Gobble will be 10-7 for the remainder.